Hey everyone and welcome to this new video. In this video I want to show you what I believe is the best home assistant panel I have found so far. More after the intro, enjoy. Yes, first of all let me explain my criteria for what makes a perfect home assistant panel for me. And that would be a relatively small panel that does not run Android, iOS or anything else but is really designed for home assistant. It is configurable and on top of that it is easy to configure, which does not mean that I have to spend hours and hours getting it into a reasonable design. It naturally looks stylish and the best part would be if it could serve some other function as well. And that's exactly what I have found now. This is essentially not a new product, but it is now available in a new guise, so to speak. This is about the Sunoff NS panel, which I have also introduced in a few videos before. Back then, I flashed it with a special version of Tasmota, However, there is now an ESP Home variant that can connect directly with a blueprint in Home Assistant. To give you a little preview, this is what it looks like. You have a home screen that you can configure, so where does the weather come from and which temperature values are displayed. Below are the buttons, and you can customize the labels for what should happen. And then of course, you have the various configuration options that are very important. You can swipe from the right, swipe from the left, swipe from the top, swipe from the bottom, and then design your own pages, where you can place your own buttons, lights, automations and so on. The cool thing is, you can also press and hold, for example, on RGB lights to adjust the color. So you have quite a few additional configuration options. Setting it all up is not that complicated either. For anyone who has already flashed the Sunoff NS panel with Tasmota, it's really quite easy, because basically, you only need to remove the panel once, unscrew the two screws on the top, and then pay attention to this pin configuration here and connect everything to a USB flash interface. Next, go to your ESP home and create a new device. It doesn't matter what you select because once the device is added, you will open the configuration and overwrite everything with the configuration you receive from the project. I will link everything below in the video description. Next, you install everything by clicking on install and then selecting USB. So after the installation is complete, you can reassemble everything, as in my case, install it on the wall, and basically just add a new device in your Home Assistant instance, just like you would with an ESP Home device. Now we still need to flash the display, because the microcontroller for the control and the display controller are two separate components. However, this is also relatively simple. The only thing you need to do is connect via SSH, in my case, with the Docker variant. If you are using Home Assistant OS, you can install the file manager, then go to your config directory, and create a new folder using mkdir and name it. In the file manager, you can simply click on create new folder and name it www. After that, you need to completely restart Home Assistant once and then you can just place the file that is located in the GitHub link I provided below into the directory. You can also test directly whether you can access them, as this is important, by entering your Home Assistant IP with the port followed by local and the file name, in this case, nspanel.tft. If the file opens or is downloaded, you have done everything correctly. Now I just need to go to the settings on the NSPANEL device and check the update TFT display switch under configuration. And now the Sunoff NS panel should display that it is currently flashing. At the same time, we can already dive into automation and download the template for the Sunoff NS panel. I will also link you the URL for that. You then click on create automation and should already see a ready-made automation. Above. You can enter the name that you have also set for the Sunoff NS panel in ESP Home. It must be identical and you can choose a language. I would initially leave the next values for synchronization and so on as they are. Next, you can add a weather integration, weather entity, outdoor temperature sensors, indoor temperature sensors, hot water, humidity sensors, and so on. You can set what the left and right buttons should do, how they should be named, and then create the individual pages, a total of four, each with its own name as well as its own Home Assistant entities. In my case, I wanted to control an entire group. To do this, you need to create a group from your lamps in Home Assistant, for example, and then you can enter them here. With this, you can control the entire group with a single click, and that's basically it. What I've noticed is how incredibly fast the control is, so when I press a button, it is implemented almost in real time. Whether I sent the command via MQTT to my Tasmota relay or via Zigbee to my lamp, it really went super fast. With Tasmota, it always took a few milliseconds longer. Ah, uh, 
You could definitely notice that. Overall, I must say that I am really very satisfied with this interface. Especially when you place the Sunoff NS panel in a central area like the exit or something, it can be really cool to trigger individual automations from there, check whether all the lights are on or off, see what the weather is like when you want to go outside and so on. For those who would like to get a Sunoff NS panel, I will also include the link in the video description below. And with that, I would say that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even found it helpful. If so, I would really appreciate a rating. If you have any further questions, feel free to write them in the comments below. And then I would say, see you in the next video. Until then, take care and goodbye.